Hey friends, continuing with my Europe saga, we'll call it. My mom and Ralph just left back to the United States, leaving my sister and I in Granada. When one travels, one should not expect for everything to be easy breezy cover girl. Even when I planned a trip, like a couple years ago, I went to Iceland, completely planned, but on more than one occasion, I still uh, couldn't go on a couple of hikes because of it inclement weather. So th things just happen, okay? My mom and Ralph left in the morning, which left the whole day for Taylor and I to explore the city of Granada. So we went to a small supermercado to pick up a few items for a picnic at the Carmen de los Martires. The second place was Casa Juanillo, which was a restaurant wine bar. But we had the great fortune, the luck, if you will, la suerte, of going at the time that Americans usually have dinner, which is hours before the Spanish usually have dinner. Which basically meant we got the wine bar to ourselves, but what really made the experience were the tapas that kept coming from the kitchen, but also la conversación, which is a huge part of why I was so excited to go to Spain to practice the Spanish I've been learning. So by the time we left, I got to leave very happy, but then it was time to leave Granada. Our next destination was Bedmar, which is just outside of Jaén. It's this teeny tiny, not even quite a city, it's a village more like. As we were getting settled on the bus to go to Jaén so that we could get to Bedmar so they could sleep in a cave, Taylor asked a very important question which was if we had a car rental to get to Bedmar, which was a no. So I got on my phone immediately so that I could check all of the car rental places in Jaén, most of which were closed. Finally, I found one and that one also happened to have the option to chat with a person from the company so that i could ask questions which i did because i didn't want this to be another arizona car rental experience i'll leave a link to that story right here by the time we got there they drove taylor and i to the car they gave us the keys and uh, peaced out when i was 15 or 16 years old my dad taught me how to drive a stick shift and uh, that has served me very well over the years i've been able to drive even internationally in Jamaica in Japan and in Iceland so we get in the car we get comfortable there's a fence in front of the car so the first thing I have to do is put the car in reverse normally that's not a big deal but for the life of me I could not even figure out how to put the car in reverse not even YouTube help because I was very impatient so finally I had Taylor sit and steer the car as I pushed it away from the fence not my proudest moment on my worst. <laughs> Not five minutes later, we approached a roundabout or glorieta and there were a bunch of cops around. I didn't know what was going on, but I did know enough to slow down for safety. And as a police officer was waving me through, I was going so slow for safety while not pressing down on the clutch, which meant I stalled right in front of the cop. So of course he pulled me over. And because we were this far away from all the big cities, not one bit of English was spoken. So I got my wish when he asked for my licencia conducia. He looked at it, he looked at me and asked me if I was on vacation because I look Spanish or something. And when I said yes, he said, get out of here. So I got out of there. When we got to the cave after stalling a couple times and still not having figured out reverse, we remembered that we didn't have any food. It was late, like eight or nine, and when I tell you Bedmar was small, but they did have a grocery store and it was still open, so we got in our little car and drove through the bumpy alleys, which probably were not meant for cars. We found a parking space and went shopping. <laughs> Wait, spin it again, spin it. <laughs> I don't know what 
I was expecting this cave experience to be like, but it is stinky up in here. Look how tiny this bathroom is. Watch out, watch your head. <laughs> If I put it in 0.6, it looks ginormous. Look at the size of this thing. Oh Come my. Come on in, the water's just fine. <laughs> The next day I gave myself plenty of time to rest because it had all been like go 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 until that point and then we went on a very relaxing road trip through the olive country. It's 7 o'clock and we have to get up early so that we can make it to and catch that. Door is so difficult to open. It takes one entire. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Both arms. Both arms. <laughs> Fortunately, the trip to Cordoba from Bedmar through Jaén was uneventful. Hey, I'm not the baddest bitch you got. And I'm a And then we go right? Right here? This little alley? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot girl, why would you think that? <laughs> But now the problem is that I actually start work at two and not three like I thought. We had a little bit of time to plan. Taylor was able to find this olive oil experience. We see these big ones, they're really, really big, but if we were squeezed, we will not get too much liquid. So they are not good for to make olive oil because we are gonna have a lot of waste, so to say. Uh, because the seed that is inside, or the pips, whatever you want, we call in a really poetic way bones, lo hueso del vino, o lo hueso de la aceituna. Siempre cuando llega un bar, de, I don't know how much has actually been retained in my head, but it was a really fun experience. We got to eat bread with different types of olive oil, and you could actually taste the difference between the different olive oils, which I thought was wild because I wouldn't say I have a very refined palate, but it was yummy. But one of the biggest reasons that I went to Cordoba was to meet my Spanish tutor. It was absolutely surreal to meet someone who had just been a face on a screen for the past three years. We're about to meet Alfonso for the first time in person. I'm really excited. How excited am I? Really excited. <laughs> meet me under the clock. <laughs> That's the traditional flamenquino in Cordoba. Maybe you find something with shrimp inside or cheese or... All right, that's, these are delicious as well. But this is the most traditional, traditional one from, from Cordoba. Because it was a weekday, we couldn't hang out for too, too long. He had to work and I did too. From Cordoba, Taylor and I separated for a few days. She went off to northern Portugal and I went to Ronda before heading over to Portugal, which I'll talk about next time. Thankfully, I don't have any regrets about not planning this trip as thoroughly as I do others, but I do typically like planning trips so I know what my options are and I'm not spending time on the trip trying to find what my options are. Taylor was a tremendous help on this 
roller coaster of a journey, but I am looking forward to planning my next trip. If you have any questions about what I talked about, or if you want to share your own tumultuous journey, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Such tiny trash cans? Oh, I don't know.